to the word of God in this time of pandemic, we need to feed our souls. So the our preacher for this afternoon, she is the one of commission pastor and leader here in Hong Kong Church. And uh, welcome the mighty servant of God, Pastora Gloria Lagenio. Please take over, Pastora Gloria Lagenio. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Edna. God bless you. Uh, magandang hapon sa ating lahat. It's a very blessed day. God give us a beautiful day. God has give us a beautiful weather. And uh, God give us uh, a wonderful place where we can uh, speak the word of God. Praise the Lord. Dito ako sa bahay ng mga ipugaw uh, people. Thank God for providing a place for me where I could uh, use. And I'm so happy. I'm so glad because uh, last Sunday it was really uh, uh, hindi ko alam but that is the day wherein I had uh, uh, seek the Lord at dito, uh, dito niya binigay itong mensahe natin sa habong ito. So uh, kahit mawalan tayo ng uh, ng it seems that uh, uh, the way the Lord is uh, is uh, something that is uh, uh, but God made a way and now when I think the uh, uh, face of God He gave this uh, um, message and a praise in my heart and this morning we've learned and heard about the message about evangelism and do not in the uh, napakinggan why we need an evangelism uh, activities. At dito sa hapon, let us uh, also learn the divine directions. Ito ang dapat gawin ng isang ma-evangelize natin as we are doing. This is what we are doing with believers in Christ. So our topic for this very afternoon is uh, Divine Directions to Make Every Effort. Effort for what? Of course, effort to make effort for the perfect way of God. Okay. So, um, dito sa Bible, as I was reading, Meron akong, I have read at least five. Find the sinabi dyan na make every effort. And as I say that this is a divine direction because it comes from God. And when it is a direction, it is something important. It is something not to be ignored. It is something that we should seriously consider. As far as our um, salvation is concerned, ito pong direction na ito ay kailangan i sa buhay natin and we, we, we need to do it. That's why making every effort, yan ang title ng ano natin. Making effort, the word effort means it is an action that involves our mind and body. So, it is a direction of God to make every effort for the perfect will of God in our life. So, if it is an effort, that means it is an action. If it's a vision, our faith must be coupled with action. And so, as I said that uh, uh, there are five directions from God that we are going to learn in as far as the word, uh, our salvation is concerned. And before we will start, let us uh, pray 
Father God in heaven, we thank the Lord for this wonderful afternoon of allowing us again to listen from you, Lord. We thank you for our breath. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for this time that you have allowed for us to listen from you. And Lord, allow our hearts be filled with your words and help us to put into action what we have heard from you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, we welcome you to be our teacher this very afternoon. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking for control even for the internet and even for every place, every souls that are in tune this time, oh God. We thank you for ministering to each one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. So number one, the uh, number one directions is found in Luke chapter 13, verse uh, 24 to 27. Luke 13, chapter 24, uh, chapter 13, verse 24 to 27. It says here that uh, we will start in uh, verse 23. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? And in verse uh, 24, this is the answer of Jesus. He said to them, make every effort to enter through the long door. Because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. So the question of the disciple of Jesus Christ, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, asked this, that are there any few tinanong niya kung kukunti ba ang makapasok or kukunti ba ang masay? And this is the answer of Jesus. So they make every effort. Instead of saying yes, kukunti, but this is the answer of Jesus. Make every effort to enter through the palm door. And the uh, um, King James, it says gate. Instead of door, it is gate. Enter through the narrow gate. Because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. So this is actually uh, um, an eye opener for us to see and to come to think that those who will be saved will be should, should need to make every effort because why do we need to to make every effort because once the door is closed once the door is closed you cannot enter the answer 25, once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and feeding. Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. <laughs> then you will see, we eat and drunk with you, and you don't in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all of you evil doors. So, makita natin dito, na all that time, malamin na sa sabi, they will protest to God that you we eat with you, you talk us. But his answer is, I don't know you. Get away from me. I don't know you. You are evil doors. So the reason for them, even though they are not in the door, is the reason that they cannot enter to the narrow door. And the time that the open was uh, was uh, and the door was open, is they were evil doers. So the main reason is evil. They are evil doers. But how come? How come that they say that you, you, you taught us? 
you will eat with you. So this means that uh, a lot of Christian, this is actually warning for everyone. Na maraming Christiano got told that they can go their way and at the, uh, at the time that the, uh, the door was closed and they can just uh, knock the door and the door will be open for them. So it cannot be. So the gate here is no other than, or the door here is no other than Jesus. No other than Jesus. Sabi dyan sa uh, John chapter 10 verse 9. John chapter 10 verse 9. Para patunayan natin. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. See? He will come in and go out and find pasture. The faith comes only to stand and care and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see? So Jesus is the door. Jesus is the gate. And so, ang ibig sabihin nito, that we need to enter into a personal relationship with that gate, who is Jesus. We need to surrender our life to Jesus Christ. We need to uh, come to think that well, what we can do, yung, uh, yung, pa, uh, yung palagay natin na uh, we can do what we want and at the end of the day, uh, we can be, uh, we can still, the door is open, still be open for us. That is impossible according to what we have uh, read in here. And that's why it is time, it is time to, uh, to, to, to surrender our life. And is kaya tayo nag-evangelize dahil ang isang tao, kung wala pa si Kristo sa kanyang buhay, ito po ang initial, this is the first thing that he will do before salvation. When Jesus will come, he should be prepared. He should he should surrender his life to God. Yan ito, this is the perfect will of God that uh, a person should do. So repentance and surrendering your life to Jesus will determine your eternal destiny. So if you surrender your love. Your, your, your life to Jesus Christ. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. That means that you are, you are interested or you want to be saved and it determines your eternal destiny. There are two things na kung saan pumunta ang tao. It's either in heaven or in hell. So, where Jesus is in heaven and that's why Sabi dito, sabi nasa natin kanina that I have come in half in half if uh, give life to the fullest to those who will come and enter through me. So yan po ang uh, isang uh, gawin ng isang uh, kaluluwa and then another one in John chapter 10 27 Chapter 10, verse 27. Sabi dito, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. And they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So, dito sa binasa natin, sabi, sabi niya, this is Jesus speaking, that I know my sheep listen to my voice. So, ang isang mananampalagay ay kailangan nakinig sa Panginoon. And they follow me. So, what you hear, you should obey. 
kung ano ang napilinggan mo sa kanya, is you need to put into action, kagaya yung boss natin. What we hear from our boss, from our master, pag tayo nabigyan ng instruction uh, patungkol sa pagluluto or anything that we do in our, uh, in the, in our employer's house is, we need to listen. And after that, we follow and obey their instruction. At ganun na lang tayo sa Panginoon. Sabi dito, the re, uh, the, ang panatandaan na ang ship na yan ay ship na isang shipper is, sabi ni, my ship listen to my voice. And they follow me. So, ibig sabihin, kung ano ang sinabi ko, iyan susundin nila. They will follow my way. So, that is the principle of being a ship. And that is why listening and doing what you have learned from the Lord is a proof of being a ship to a good shepherd. Who is our good shepherd? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So that is a, that is a, a, a one direction. That's why while the door is open, we need to take the opportunity. Huwag na, kung may isa na bago ka uh, uh, before you are deciding to enter. Sabi dyan sa Isaiah, seek the Lord when He can be found. So, when there is an opportunity, ang isang nila lang ay dapat need to enter through the narrow door. Kailangan magkaroon ng personal relationship sa Uh, kung saan nagbibigay yung buhay niya, no other than Jesus Christ. So, that is number one, direction. We need to uh, make every effort. Why it is effort? Because we need to keep on listening. It is an effort because we need to keep on listening to the shepherd, to our good shepherd, in doing what he says. So that is an effort. Any Christian who claim to be a, a believer, if he is just listening and not doing what he has heard, that is nothing. That is a, a proof of not a shape. That is an evidence of not uh, a shape. So we, let's go to number two. Number two is found in Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Let us go progressively according to the arrangement of uh, the book, the Bible. Romans chapter 14, verse 17 to 19. Romans 14:19 For the kingdom of God For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. So in verse 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. So that is number two. 
Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Yan po ang pangalawang direction na effort to do what leads to peace. God is a God of peace. That's why we need to uh, seek the face of God because He is the source of peace. And we need, this is our, our responsibility for mutual edification. Edification means building up. Building up. So again, uh, our, our, uh, the main will of God as He command us to make every effort is to uh, be an instrument be an instrument of righteousness to bend up one another. To bend up one another. As it says in uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Do not leave any unwholesome talk. Because out of your mouth, but only what is helpful. for for building others up according to their needs, that it may be benefit those who listen. See, so this is the uh, advice of Apostle Paul to the Ephesians. Na kailangan, we make use of our time for talking on what is something that builds up or encourages our sisters or our uh, all those that uh, uh, need our help for a spiritual uh, growth. So that is a, a that is one determination to be an instrument of righteousness reveals our passion for Christ. Ito ang gusto ng Panginoon. That's why He called us to be His people, to be His body. And we should make use of our time. We should make use of every opportunity to encourage one another. That's why every time we are here gathering, uh, every time, every weekend, na tayo ay we are here having fellowship so that we will encourage one another, building up the faith of one another. Yan po ang ating responsibility ba, sa ating uh, cell group, sa ating uh, kapatiran, na, uh, lalo na sa mga follow-ups natin, lalo na sa mga uh, those who are uh, uh, young in faith, they need our encouragement. That's why mutual edification is, uh, is very important. And Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. Let the peace of Christ roll in your hearts. Since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful. Verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. And as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. So our willingness, our willingness to uh, encourage or admonish one another with wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit is the result of God's peace in our heart. So, when we have the peace from God, ito na ang kinuturo ng Holy Spirit sa atin. As the Holy Spirit dwells in us, as we read the Word of God, we always use our time, we use every opportunity to be an instrument of encouragement and for the growth of everyone in the church or in our cell group. Amen? 
So that is number two. Number three? Number three is uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse three. It's found in Ephesians chapter four, verse three. Another make every effort, to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body in one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, and you were, uh, and when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and all. So number three. Divine directions that we can find in, in our Bible is unity, to keep the unity of the Spirit. So the word keep the unity, that means that the unity of the Spirit is among the believers, among us. The only thing is keep or maintain the unity. Why? So that we can fulfill or you can, we can do the purpose of God in our lives. Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Sanya, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will receive it from God. That's why we honor God with our body. And you see, since our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, there should be a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit in unity among us. At yan po ang kalooban ng Diyos. That is, the, that is the desire of God. That's why it's a divine direction because yan po ang kalooban ng Diyos. Now, when we come in unity of the Spirit, when we come in unity and worship, when we come in unity and prayer, when we come in unity and offerings, when we come in unity and fulfilling the vision of the church, it is something that is pleasing to God. Spiritual unity is maintained by living by the Spirit. So, in order to maintain the that the spiritual unity we need to live by the spirit that is found in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 17. so i say live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature what makes ano ang kumokontra sa kalooban ng Diyos? Sa kalooban ng Diyos? It is the same, our, our sinful nature. And that's why in order to beat our sinful nature, we need to believe by the Holy Spirit. We need to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. As we have our personal devotion, as we worship, the Holy Spirit will manifest His will and purpose. And that's why we need to move in accordance to the will of the Holy Spirit. And that is unity. Romans chapter 8 verse 27. And Romans chapter 8 verse 27. Sabi dito, this is how, this is how the Holy Spirit maintains the uh, uh, the spirit of unity and he who serves searches our hearts know the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the sins in accordance to god's will that's why the presence of the holy spirit is very important in the life of every believer that he is the one he is the key the key for us to stand firm. He is the one who is giving us that wisdom. Who is, he is the one who is the source of love, peace, joy, and serving the Lord. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, Philippians 
defensive. It says here, Paul is saying here, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, you see, this is how the uh, unity of the Spirit is being uh, manifested. If any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. So, do nothing out of service ambition or vain content, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also the interest of others. So that is, we need to work hand in hand in the same attitude, in the same goal and purpose. The Holy Spirit. And the perfect example of this is found in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, this is one of the perfect examples uh, or demonstration of this unity of spirit. This is about the uh, uh, believers of the New Testament during the time. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Go ahead. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miracle signs were done by the apostles. It is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Yan po ang, ang, that is the, the work of the Holy Spirit that are manifesting in the life of the believers during that time. In verse 45, setting their positions in goods, they give to anyone as he had me. You see? During this time, we can see that the, 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 the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit was so intense. Because to the point, to the point that they sell their, their positions and brought it to, uh, to, the, uh, to the temple court. In verse 20, uh, 46, verse 46, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sense of hearts. And the result was in verse 7, praising God and enjoying the fever of all the people. And the Lord added to their daily numbers to those who were being saved. You can see the power of the unity of the Spirit in here. Unity of the Spirit will fulfill the visions of the church towards fruitfulness. So this is the important why we need to be united in spirit. That's why this is a divine direction. Kaya pag uh, mayroon tayong goal na nire-reach out, the participation or the cooperation of everyone is very important. Number four, let us go to number four. Number four, divine direction is found in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 14. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 14. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So another effort that we need to see in here is to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Why? 
Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So what is the point of uh, coming and serving the Lord if we cannot see the Lord? So this is the instruction that we need to, we need to be holy. Holiness is set apart for God. Set apart from sin and set apart for God. And living holy is the main purpose of Christ for his people. So this is the reason why we need to live holy. It is the purpose of Christ for his people. As it says in Ephesians 1 to 4, I, Ephesians uh, uh, verse uh, 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy in blameless in his sight. So that is why we need to be holy because that is the purpose of God for us, for us so that he can use us so that we can be an instrument uh, for him. Because if we are unholy, that means that we are not qualified to be his instrument. Even in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7, God did not call us to be impure, but to live for me. So that is all the reason why we need to live holy. And how are we going to live holy? Of course, to be holy, we need because God is a holy God, so we need to be holy. And we need the Holy Spirit to, to dwell in us. Because He is, the Holy Spirit is holy. That's why when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, then he, he taught us, He will teach us, and He will keep us to, to, to not to compromise with the world, he will teach us not to, uh, uh, he will beat our sinful nature. And that's why Sabi John sa Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. From time to time, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit, it says in chapter uh, 14 verse 26 in John, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, will teach you all things and remind you everything I have said to you. And He will teach you all things. So, the Holy Spirit, that is the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. That's why kailangan natin ang Holy Spirit. So, we always ask to infill. We always ask uh, God to infill us with the, with the Holy Spirit. Another one, another one that, uh, uh, another way wherein we can live holy is saying no to ungodliness. In Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 13, Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So, who brings salvation is Jesus Christ. So, it, it, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness in worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright in godly life in this present age. So, when we follow Jesus Christ, when we ask the presence of the Holy Spirit, it will convict us to say no to ungodliness, because ungodliness makes us unholy. If we, uh, if we do what the people in the world will do, we will become unholy. And we are not fit to be his instrument. We are, uh, be, we are, we can be, we can, the, the Holy Spirit can leave us, can leave this temple, can leave us. If we compromise and when we are influenced with the world, 
There is no way that we can live upright. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why we live by the Holy Spirit. Kailangan, we need to the Holy Spirit because that is the key. Another one is in, uh, in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. That is very, uh, uh, all the preachers keep on mentioning about this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. The pattern of this world. Do not agree. Do not compromise. Do not conform or do not agree with the pattern of this world. What is in this world? Sabi dyan sa 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. For everything in this world, there is the craving of sinful man. There is the boasting of what he has and does. So that does not come from the Father, but from the Word. That's why, this is the reason why we do not conform to the pattern of this world, because it comes from the devil. It comes, it is an evil desire. It makes us away from the present. It draws us away from the presence of God. If we allow ourselves to be influenced by this world, surely our thoughts will our thoughts will be filled with the wisdom of this world. Our minds, our hearts will be filled with the love of anything in this world. And that is not pleasing to God. That's why we need our minds to be renewed. Sabi dito, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you are able to taste and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, pag na-renew ang isip natin, how are we going to renew our mind? By feeding in, saturating our minds with the word of God instead of the wisdom of this world. So, the secret for not conforming to the pattern of this world is again, we fill our minds with the Word of God. Meditate the Word of God. And allow the Holy Spirit to minister in your heart. And in number five, Number five, the divine direction. Na sinabi dyan, make every effort again. Number five is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. Sabi dito, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, in at peace with him. So, this is another uh, direction from the Lord. Effort to be found is spotless, blameless. It's spot, it, it, it signifies sin. And blame, you will be blamed when you ignore all this instruction that we have uh, uh, learned. You will be blamed when you ignore this instruction from God and fail to do the will of God in your lifetime. So you will be blamed because we believers should put into action what we are uh, listening from Him. And we should, we should avoid sin. We need to uh, be very careful what is sin disobedience? So, sabi dito, be found spotless. Ibig sabihin, be found sinless. That's why every time, we need to live a life of repentance. Dahil every time tayo ay nagkakamali, we are committing mistakes. And when the Holy Spirit convicts us of our pride, of our mistake, we always uh, uh, confess it. And 
we always try to uh, not do it again. We don't leave that sin because if you recognize that what you have done is a sin, of course you do not, you are not supposed to do it again. And by doing all this, by very carefully, carefully uh, following all the instruction, you will be blameless. You will be blameless. Dahil, uh, kagaya sa ating uh, amo, pag ginawa mo lahat, ang uh, uh, dapat na gawin mo sa bahay, then your, your employer will not uh, blame you. Will not, your employer will not question you because you have done everything. And then, when you have done everything, of course, the thing that you will have is peace. You will have peace from God because you have done your part. You have done your part, and you, uh, although sometimes you are struggling from sin, but when you know that what you are doing or when you, when you feel that you are going in another direction, then the Holy Spirit will convict you and you will confess it and you will be forgiven. So we need to be always live a life of love and a life of uh, uh, purity in the sight of God. So how to be found spotless or blameless? Paano tayo? How to be found? One day we will be facing the judgment of God. We will be among the multitudes of God and the judgment day. And each of us will receive what he has done while you are on earth. So, Ayaw natin, we, ayaw natin na, ano ang gusto natin, we will found spotless or we'll, we will not be blamed for something. So number one is uh, persistence in doing good, seeking glory, honor, and immortality. That is uh, uh, Romans chapter 2 verse 7. Romans chapter 2 verse 7. To those who, by persistence in doing good, seek glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. So, you have done your part, you have fulfilled the mission, you have done the will of God, that's why you deserve eternal life. And that is, that is why the word persistent there is a word that means it's an effort. It is an effort because uh, uh, our duty, our duty to be faithful is until to our last breath. We will do what we are supposed to do. Persistence and evangelism, persistence and meditating the word of God, Persisting and coming to fellowship regularly, persisting and giving our tithes in our offerings, supporting the gospel, persisting and coming to worship the Lord, persisting to be a witness for Christ. So it needs, and that is not only for. Uh, uh, during weekends, it should be supposed to be when there is an opportunity. That's why our thing for today is living wisely. Make every opportunity. Habang may opportunity natin na gagawin ang mga ito, we have to come to our senses and continue to be faithful. And first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 17. Sabi nito, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus Christ. 
So this is what we are doing every time we come fellowship with one another. We come in joyfully celebrating the goodness of God. We come in praying together and we come in giving thanks of all our, our the protection, the provision of God. And we come to give thanks in all this faithfulness in us. And it says here that that is God's will for us. And that's why patuloy tayo uh, having a fellowship kahit na ganito, but at least we can still do it. No one can hinder us to come and fellowship with one another. And uh, number two, how to be found spotless and blameless? In 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, 1st John chapter 2 verse 16 Sabi dito, do not love the world or anything in the world See? Do not love the world or anything in this world Anyone loves the world the love of the Father is not in him So this is again uh, something uh, important for us to ponder that loving anything in this world will divert our attention, will divert our our minds, will divert our our uh, action to do otherwise instead of doing the perfect will of God. So the love of the Father is not in Him. In verse sixteen. For everything in the world, for everything in the world, what is in the world? The cravings of sinful man, cravings of material, cravings of power, cravings of wealth, cravings of many things that the flesh desire, lust of his eyes, lust of his eyes, anything that will uh, uh, attract your attention and the boasting of what he has in us. So boasting comes not from the Father but from the Word. Diba? Magkikita natin sa Facebook lahat, kinapakita kung ano ang meron sa kanya. What he's doing. He's boasting about the investment. He's based boasting about about uh, uh, the business uh, uh, enterprise anything and that is all the pattern of this world that if we are not careful we can see it here that doing this the love of the father is not in us kung iyan ang gagawin natin the love of the father is not in us ibig sabihin the our our god in heaven will be grieving if we will love the world instead of him. We are commanded to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And that's why we need to uh, be persistent. We need to be very careful not to be influenced with the pleasure of this world. Kailangan iwasan natin. Number three, number three uh, ways in order to be found spotless and blameless is uh, sabi dyan sa Matthew 12, 24, verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 to 13. Sabi dito, because of the increase of wickedness, see, the love of most will grow cold. And verse 13, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. So, at this time, starting from this time, because of the increase of wickedness, what is wickedness? Loving the things in this world. Getting away from the perfect will of God, that is wickedness. 
disobedience that is wickedness. Why they disobey? Because they don't listen to the word of God. Why we they disobey? Because they want. They are being guided by their flesh. That's why, that's the reason why we beat our sinful nature. Because our sinful nature is sinful. Kailangan yung uh, uh, the nature of the Holy Spirit that we, is the one that is uh, prevailing in our life. Sabi so, because of the increase of wickedness. So we can see actually, we can see what is uh, uh, going in this world right now. And if you are wise, sabi dito, this is the, the thing, but he who stands firm, stands firm in the faith, stands firm in the commitment, stands firm and, and being dedicated to the work you have uh, uh, received. So standing firm to the end, you will be saved. So yan po ang, uh, yan po ang uh, uh, mga wa, uh, paraan to be found spotless and blameless. Kailangan na magpatuloy tayo. Ano mang ang nakikita natin, what disturb us, what cause us to worry, give it to the Lord. What cause us to uh, divert our attention, we must meditate the word of God and see the promises of God for those who are faithfully standing in His sight. Because at the end of this journey, at the end of our life in this world, salvation, there is salvation. In Colossians uh, chapter 4 verse 17, Colossians chapter 4 verse 17, chapter 4 verse 17 sabi dito say to it that you complete the work you have received in the Lord this is the uh, instruction of uh, Apostle Paul to the Colossians to those uh, church in Colossae say to it that you complete the work of God you have received so when you become a believer God will start to work in you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, that is uh, the key for you to, to, to deserve, to be always being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit in order that you will continually complete the work, you finish the race, and fight the good fight of faith as a uh, as Paul has said in 1 Timothy. So, completing the work that we have received from God, when you complete and finish the race, then, of course, that is, walang masabi ng Panginoon sa atin, we will be blameless. We will be blameless dahil na kompleto, natapos natin ang pinapagawa sa atin. And the conclusion is, we come now to conclusion, Chapter 5 of Thessalonians, verse 23 to 24. Thessalonians, first Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. Sabi dito, only God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. See? The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. So, all this instruction that God has given us, Sabrito, make every effort. So, number one, 
We need to enter into the mando that is uh, Jesus Christ. We need to uh, commit our life to Jesus Christ and continue to walk with Him. And another one is make every effort to live in peace and be an instrument of building up our sisters, building mutual edification. And number three is making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit. Number four, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. So holiness is very important in as far as uh, our salvation or going to heaven is concerned. And number five is making every effort to be found spotless and blameless so that when Jesus will suddenly come, we will have peace at him during the judgment day. Amen? So praise the Lord. This is the message of God for every one of us. At ito po ang instruction ng Panginoon, direction ng Panginoon, bawat isa sa atin. Ito ang dapat natin Ito ang dapat gawin ng isang mananampalataya. That's why kanina tayo ay uh, nakarinig kung uh, ang, ang kahalagahan ng uh, uh, evangelism. And so when we evangelize and uh, have souls in our group that let us all teach all this uh, instruction, this uh, this. Uh, Direction. So, because this is the, the the instructions from God that we need to follow until Jesus will come. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord of God, for this opportunity, O God, of reminding us our duty to respond. To your instruction or your direction of God. Help us, Holy Spirit. Now that we have heard your words of God, help us, O God, that we will carry out everything, put into action what we have heard, God. Lord, apart from you, we are nothing. But we praise you, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work in every believer of God. That, Lord, we will fulfill your goal in purpose while you have called us, so oh God. Surely your plan for us is something good. Your plan is to have, uh, uh, have a future. Your plan for us is something good to be with you. And, Lord, help us, so oh God. Help us to uh, fulfill all this instruction that we will be found blameless and is spotless when you will come. Lord, we do not know the time of your coming. It's a prayer of God in our desire that, Lord, we will keep on, keep on following you, keep on listening to you, keep on responding to your call, keep on obeying you, God, and keep on, oh God, aligning our minds with the will of God. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who listened this afternoon. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us, reminding all this direction of God. And we thank you for sure, God, that, Lord, at the end of our journey, oh God, when you will suddenly come, you will, oh God, we will have, you will be in heaven with you, oh God, enjoying in your kingdom, oh God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. To, to encourage us and to give us uh, the things that we needed, to give us the strength of God, to, to give us the counsel of God that, that we will continue to stand firm till the end. In Jesus' name, amen. Give you back to the ending.